Welcome back to our next video in the Translation and Education series brought to you by the National Association of Educational Translators and Interpreters of Spoken Languages or NETISL. So in our last video, we talked about the importance of creating a personal glossary. And I do emphasize, however, that as translators and interpreters, we are part of a community, a school community, and we should strive to support our fellow translators so we can produce the best and most uniform documents in our school districts. To do this, we suggest that you share the joy, meaning that you have a method through which you can share your glossaries or um, be able to create a list of commonly used terms in your school district. Perhaps you and others who do translations in your school district need to come to a consensus on how to translate terms like middle school or high school, which are often terms whose translations are open to debate um, as our educational systems differ. Or perhaps how to translate language arts or homecoming or expressions such as off task or using time wisely. I'm sure someone in your school district has come across the same term and has had the same question, or perhaps someone came up with a great definition you can use. So it is very important that we know our audience. Um, if your parent population is mostly Spanish speaking, find out where they're mostly from. We do not want to ex exclude anyone from our translated text. And we want to make efforts to include language variations that may be more commonly used in one country than another, or perhaps put examples in parentheses or in footnotes. So one of the best strategies that we used in our school district was to ask Spanish speaking parents to volunteer in a translation review committee. This committee would review our translations because we wanted them to um, wanted to make sure that it made sense to our audience. So the parents had an incredible opportunity to contribute to the schools, um, and we as a team were delighted to learn so many new words in Spanish that we were unfamiliar uh, with. So. Our next step in the translation process is to review your translation and obtain uh, feedback. So after your first draft is completed, you will need to compare your translated text to the English text. So here your goal is to make sure that no content is missing or misinterpreted. Perhaps a, a word sounds better to you now than when you worked in the translation. Um, so this is when having another set of eyes really helps. No translations that I do now or that I have ever done in the past as an administrator went live without having gone through a review process. So I made sure that my Spanish speaking reviewers came from different countries to make sure that we produced an inclusive translation. This may also apply to other languages, which uh, may have the same variations that should be taken into account. So sometimes taking a break from the translation and reading it the next day or even after a few hours will help you discover um, some sections that you now want to change. Our next step is to refine and review your text. So here you are no longer comparing your translation to the English. We have already done that. Now you are refining your language, paying attention to the register level of your vocabulary. Perhaps add a term in parentheses to make sure that the translation is inclusive for language variations. Sometimes footnotes are needed to include longer um, explanations. So during this final step, you're also looking to make sure you're mirroring the format to the English version. And this is really important. The images should be the same, the same. They should be in the same place. If a link directs the user to a website, your translation should do the same. All QR codes and other graphics need to look just like the English. So this is when we make magic happens. And sometimes even the formatting takes longer than the actual translation. Um, usually in, in our translated um, uh, versions, our translated text is longer than the English. So we have to play with uh, font size and margins, resizing images, etc. So we suggest that you definitely become familiar with programs such as Publisher and Adobe and PowerPoint and so many others 
um, because many of the documents that you get, you will receive, um, you have been created using these programs. So your goal is really to mirror the English version that you get. And of course, there are several tutorials online that can walk you through different features of these programs. So you can help um, figure out how to manipulate images and text um, like a professional. So um, our last video will cover some information about writing style and some of the rules of writing that we need to keep in mind, um, as well as some of the best practices for translation and education. So we thank you for watching.